Welcome back to the OU Insider YouTube channel and welcome back to Quick Slants. Quick, digestible, 10 to 15 minute video breakdowns of all of the relevant angles surrounding this Oklahoma Sooners football team as we get closer and closer to spring ball. I'm Parker Thune. That is Jesse Crittenden. And today we come to the wide receiver room, which is a group that many of you have asked that we talk about. And it's it's very odd, Jesse, because there is a lot of depth in that receiver room. There is a lot of talent, at least on paper. But when you look at that group top to bottom, there are only two returning players, Jalil Farouk and Drake Stoops, who caught more than three passes in an Oklahoma uniform last year. So Marvin Mims' departure yields the opportunity for somebody to break out and inherit a much larger role in the offense. So I guess the natural place to start is, who is that guy in your eyes? Yeah, no, I think that's, I mean, you, you hit on it. I mean, Marvin Mims was the guy for this offense last year. And, and I know Braden Willis isn't a receiver, but it was those two guys that, uh, that, that got the majority of the catches. And with both of those guys out, yeah, it leaves, it leaves a lot of room for someone to kind of emerge because I think that's the other question is who's going to be maybe the number one guy. Who's going to be the number, the number two guy, um, I, I mean, obviously, I think I think Jalil Farouk is the first name to look at as a guy that I think without Marvin Mims on the field, uh, we all saw the potential that Jalil Farouk has um, a guy that uh, can really be effective in, in every area of the field. But I think I would I'm going to expect with Marvin Mims out, I would expect Jalil Farouk to maybe be more of a threat down the field. But the reality is, I think one thing that this receiver group missed last year was somebody that, I mean, somebody that was just big, somebody that could get consistent separation in every area of the field. And I think I think it was disappointing in some ways that uh, a guy like Jaden Gibson didn't get more run or a guy like Nick Anderson didn't get more run. I know those are those are those are young guys, uh, but I think uh, particularly in Jaden Gibson's case, he just seemed like a guy. Uh, when he was on the field that wasn't really ready but I mean he's got all of the tools to be a guy that that this OU offense can rely on significantly he's got size he's got speed he needs to bulk up a little bit so I, I say size in terms of height but I mean I think I, I mean not that I expected him to be a, a runaway talent right away as a freshman but I think I think more could have been expected of him and I think he's the guy that it's going to be really important during this off season for him to add a little bit more size, a little bit more bulk, but with Marvin Mims out of the way, OU desperately needs a receiver that can, that has size that can get on the field to make an impact. And I think he's, I mean, he's, he's a guy that I'm looking at right away. In my eyes and <laughs> anybody that's listening to the under the visor podcast, anybody that's a subscriber on the OU insider VIP board, they know exactly who I'm about to talk about because I am ridiculously high on him let's just say heading into the 2023 season but to me the most complete wide receiver on Oklahoma's roster is a guy that only played in three games last year and that's Nick Anderson and obviously the big caveat there is his health because he was held out for most if not all of spring ball as I recall with a wrist injury had a couple other ailments that plagued him throughout the fall and limited his time on the field but I truly believe that a fully healthy Nick Anderson would have had an immense role in Oklahoma's offense last year, even as a freshman. And you talk to sources around the program, they're salivating over the kid because he's big, six foot three. He's fast, not just fast, but quick too. good footwork, a guy that can create separation and maintain it. And then he can go up and get a 50 50 ball if he needs to because of those ball skills and because of that natural frame. And so Nick Anderson, if that is a guy that is healthy this fall, I think is going to have a breakout year. Now, Jalil Farouk, I agree, is probably your number one option in Mims stead. But with what Farouk produced last year, I think that <laughs> most defensive coordinators are going to hone in on Farouk and try to limit his impact on a football game. And to me, that's going to yield a ton of opportunity for Nick Anderson on the other side. As you look at the slot, you have Drake Stoops returning for his sixth year in the Crimson and Cream. Gavin Freeman, the former walk-on, rising sophomore, a guy that obviously had the memorable touchdown on his first career touch last season in his first career game. Oklahoma born and bred, such an easy kid to root for. 
My question, Jesse, is with Stoops coming back, with all that he's done in an OU uniform, with Freeman, a guy that probably has more natural gifting as a, as a receiver than Drake Stoops does, is there room in the offense for both of them to have a substantial role? No, I do. And I'm, I am I think there is, I think there is room and I'm glad you mentioned Freeman. I think, I mean, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you could say it's under the radar or sneaky to, to mention a, a guy like him, but anybody that watched this team last year saw, I mean, in his limited touches, I mean, he's a, he's a dude that he's just a playmaker. He's just a dude that can get on the field and make plays. And I do, I mean, I don't know if tough is the right word, but I do think, I mean, I still think, I still think that, not that Drake Stoops is ever going to be an, an 80 catch a season guy, but I still think, uh, even as big of a role, it was a career year for Drake Stoops last year, I still think he, there's room for him to be a bigger part of the offense. I think that was always uh, a tough thing under Lincoln Riley. He, Drake Stoops was just a guy that, I mean, every time he, every time he was on the field, it looked like he was, he was open or um, he made a play and just didn't see, just didn't see the field much. I think, I think Drake Stoops, it is huge him coming back, not only just because it's a career year and he's a six, you know, it's, it's coming into his sixth season, but I think he's a guy that can build on, on last year, but I don't, I don't want that to come at the expense of uh, Gavin Freeman, who I really think in more in, in with more opportunities with more time on the field. I mean, I think I don't think he's just a I don't think he's just a gadget guy or uh, a formation specific guy that can only play in a limited role. I think he's a guy that can play a much bigger role than he did last year and have a lot of success. Now let's talk about the transfers. Two guys that have already been at Oklahoma for a year in LV Bunkley Sheldon, a burner who runs really precise routes, and JJ Hester, who sat out most of the season with an ankle injury, but an Oklahoma native who went and played the first two years of his career at the University of Missouri before coming home to Oklahoma. That's a guy that I believe has yet to catch a pass. He might have had one catch against Nebraska, but... Uh, a guy that has not made much of an impact naturally uh, due to the lack of opportunity that the injury presented uh, last season for him at Oklahoma. And then you factor in the Michigan transfer, Andrell Anthony, uh, homegrown kid from Lansing that decided after two years with the Wolverines, he needed to look for more of an opportunity elsewhere. Oh, you jumped on him immediately. He's another guy that brings a ton of speed and definitely above average size this receiver room he's six foot two and a guy that has proven the ability to get downfield and get behind a defense in what limited action he's seen for the wolverines over his first two seasons so among those three guys who would you say has the biggest opportunity to make an impact in 23 that's that's tough because i do think uh all three of those guys have have potential uh absolutely but i i think andrew anthony is a guy that i really think probably has the biggest uh the the biggest potential to make an impact uh certainly right away i mean i think his his tenure in lansing was a little disappointing just because i mean he he really didn't see the field much and when he was on the field uh he didn't get much of an opportunity but i mean all you got to do is look at i mean look at his game from 2021 against michigan state he had he had 190 pass or 190 receiving yards it was just burning michigan state down the field I think I think the reason why there's the biggest impact for him is I think I think he's a guy that in his limited in his limited time on the field at, at Michigan he's a guy that clearly has the speed the ability to get down the field and make plays I think I think especially without Marvin Mims that's kind of what the OU passing offense especially in conference play kind of kind of came to was throwing it up to Marvin Mims. Now I think they're going to have to be the, the OU offense is going to need to be more versatile passing the ball. Definitely. I think they, there's going to need to be some more intermediate routes down the field, but you really need a guy that has big playability that can, that can have explosive, um, have explosive plays down the field. I think, especially without the Marvin Mims uh, angle in this offense. And I think, I think Andrew Anthony is a guy that I'm not, I don't know if he's going to step in and be the number one guy, but I think he's the guy that has big play potential written all over him. I think he's motivated to come to OU and, and make it and have a bigger impact. I think he knows his time at Michigan was a disappointment. And I think all of that being said, I, I think he's the guy I point to. That brings us to maybe the most intriguing guy in this receiving core. And that would be DJ Graham who came to Oklahoma as a wide receiver recruit, Alex Grinch and company decided they were going to play him 
on the defensive side of the ball at cornerback. He's starting by the end of his freshman season at cornerback at Oklahoma. And of course, the play that everybody remembers him for is that one-handed interception against Nebraska in September of 2021 that made the rounds on every college football highlight reel for months thereafter. But 2022 rolls around. He loses his footing in the secondary room as C.J. Colden's rise to prominence transpires. And midseason, the coaching staff makes the decision to move him back to wide receiver, which was always his first love, always the position that he wanted to play. And so now he's going to get the chance to do so he'll have two years of eligibility uh, as a rising senior here he's got the COVID bonus year if he wants to use it but what do you think you get out of DJ Graham in 2023 and if he does produce how much does that add to this Oklahoma offense yeah no I think he's I think he's a guy last year was just a weird year for him I think he had a hard time I think uh, you know, making an immediate impact in Brent Venable's defense. And to be honest, I think part of that was just because I don't think his enthusiasm for playing defense was there anymore. And I think he made it clear that he wanted to move the offensive side of the ball. But I think it was always going to be unlikely that even when that move was made, it was always going to be unlikely that he was going to immediately uh, insert himself into the OU offense, I mean, uh, halfway through the year. So I think the difference now is – having an off season, having spring ball where that's what he's doing. He's playing receiver and uh, Emma Jones tweeted about him just the other day, the new OUY receivers coach, he tweeted uh, the, the clip obviously of his, of his interception against Nebraska uh, kind of implying that, you know, I think they're taking a real look at him as some guy that, um, that can make an impact. There's no doubt. There's no denying how athletic he is. And I mean, there's, I mean, name the amount of guys that can make that kind of interception. Uh, I don't think that list is very long, uh, but obviously it is. I mean, it, just like it's an adjustment to go uh, to get to college, it's going to be an adjustment to go from defense to offense. But I think the biggest thing is having now a few months before a season starts where that is what he, he is a receiver. He's working out with the receivers. He's getting in with Emma Jones. So I think it's, but I think it's hard to project that much how much of an impact he can be. I think if you told me at the end of the year, uh, he was one of the, I mean, he was a in the regular rotation and and made a lot of big plays at receiver. That wouldn't shock me at all. If you told me that um, he was maybe more of a spot player that saw some saw some limited opportunities that wouldn't shock me either I think it's hard to project and I think that's why watching spring practices and the spring game is going to be really telling to see what his potential is there who do you think is Dylan Gabriel's favorite toy Jesse because there's that one receiver every single year that the quarterback just develops a special bond with no matter what school it is no matter what system it is there's always that one receiver that becomes the first guy that the quarterback looks to every single snap you think it's as easy as oh that's that's Jalil Farouk or do you think it's somebody else from within the conglomerate in the receiver room yeah I honestly this is uh it's a really good question and yeah and I think maybe even sometimes it's it's uh, it's as simple as having a connection and maybe it's not the guy that ends up with the most catches, but it's a guy that, um, that, yeah, the quarterback just trusts a guy that maybe you don't expect to have a big impact, but there's so much on the field that's uh, dependent on chemistry and all those things. I really think someone like Gavin Freeman can step up and be that and be that role. And maybe that's a little bit, I'm going a little bit out on a limb here because it's hard to know exactly what kind of role he's going to have. But I think even in his limited opportunities, last year uh i think i think he's a guy that uh made plays i think he's gonna have a bigger role this year and i, I don't want to go with the safe pick i want to go out on a limb a little bit and i think uh so if if we get to the end of this year and gavin freeman didn't have that big of a role everybody can can clown me but uh i i'm going with the hot takes here parker and i think i think gavin freeman is going to be a guy that that just consistently can get open and make plays and somebody that I think is going to make things easier on Dylan Gabriel. Who, who would you, who would you say that guy is? Oh man. I, I, I and again, this could be, this could age really well or really poorly, <laughs> but I, I really do get the feeling, man, that DJ Graham is going to be a lot bigger player in this offense than anybody realizes right now. People in the building are very, very high on him as a wide receiver. And it's been that way. It's been that way since the minute he made that transition back over. <laughs> Everybody kind of collectively said, oh boy, DJ Graham is going to be good. So uh, I, I also think 
that once Jaquay's petaway gets to campus, he's he's the fastest wide receiver in the room when he shows up instantly. And so much like Mario Williams in 2021, I wonder if you see Petaway start to earn some reps simply because he's that fast and that much of a home run threat because OU's wide receiver room was loaded with experienced guys in 2021. It didn't matter. Mario Williams showed up and Mario Williams played. I wonder if you see the same thing play out with Jaquay's Petaway when he shows up to campus in June uh, and once he gets the opportunity to strut his stuff in fall camp as August gives way to September. That's no. it for this. Oh, what's oh, up? I'm, I'm so sorry. No, I'm glad you mentioned him. And I think I think wide receiver room is going to be one of the more interesting rooms to look at as uh, spring ball comes around. And with that, that's where <laughs> we're going to wrap up this installment of Quick Slants. Let us know in the comments below what video you want to see next. That is Jesse Crittenden. I am Parker Thune. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to the OU Insider YouTube channel if you haven't already. Don't ever miss a thing. And obviously, head over to OUinsider.com for all of your VIP behind-the-scenes insights into Oklahoma football and recruiting. Take care, everybody.